Hello Sagittarius and welcome to your in-depth horoscope forecast for October. This is for the Sun or the Ascendant. I'm going to give you some broad themes to look out for, but please stay with me. I will then dive deep to give you in forensic detail all the ins and outs particularly relevant to your sign. And of course Jupiter, your ruler, does start this month in a very charismatic part of your scope in your fifth house. This gives you an opportunity to express yourself, but it is in retrograde and it has been in a grand opposition with Mercury. So I think that there's probably been quite a lot of an exchange of ideas, particularly around your long-term future as you come into this new month. But when it comes to work with Mercury, in a, a rest in a retrograde right at the start of the month it goes direct on the second there could be the potential for some confusion so i need to tell you about that but jupiter does also go into the sign of pisces once more which occurs on the 28th that inversion carries on through till the 23rd of november but it goes direct then and then emerges back into your fifth solar house just in time for Christmas, which is absolutely beautiful when it comes to the social scene that that can stimulate. But this month also sees the Sun and Venus in a very close relationship right through the spine of the month. But that goes across two zodiac signs. And we also have a solar eclipse Pluto goes direct. We also have Saturn going direct, but Mars into a retrograde. So, so much to share with you. Please stay with me for all of that. But if you would like to ascend above this Zodiac broadcast and embrace more serious astrology, if you give me three pieces of personal birth data, time, date, and place of birth, I can give you a roadmap that can guide you for the rest of your life. And with my special package, your year 23 forecast, and also the rest of this year free, plus 30% off. Please see the link below. These are absolutely unique to the person that they're produced for and can give you searing insights. Now, if you are new to my channel and you've yet to subscribe i'd be honored if you did so now please click or tap on the bell notification symbol and if you've already done so thank you so much for all your ongoing support so sagittarius as you come into october the sun and venus are very closely together now that's going to reach a peak on the 22nd and this could have implications for your interactions in terms of your social world, your group of friends, or your long-term future planning. Someone that you get closer to this month can turn out to be really very good for you. And this can be a relationship that goes from strength to strength. But also at the start of this month, Mercury is retrograde in your sector of work and ambition and goals, and also of responsibilities. But it does go direct on the second but through the first week of october it is in an opposition with neptune and both are t-squared by mars in your sector of relating so whether it's in your personal situation neptune more about emotions or your professional situation mercury mars in your sector of relating is asking you to be more assertive the problem is that when Mars and Neptune are in a right angle, things can seem as clear as mud. And it could be that someone can kind of want to reach out or interact to you, perhaps at a, a quite a personal level, who at first seems very appealing. But the thing with Neptune is it can be very distorting. And if the, this person is linked to your work or career in some way, I would just say if you are getting to know somebody, 
who you do associate with in a more formal setting, it's probably very important that you do continue to assert your normal boundaries. Don't let your guard down too much, even though the Sun and Venus are tempting you to do so, because I think your popularity at the very start of this month and through the first three weeks can be very high. So just be a little bit guarded, I would say. Now on the second, Mercury does go direct. And if you have been sort of humming and hawing a little bit about your future direction, as far as your professional responsibilities are concerned, by the 10th, that will start to clarify itself as Mercury moves into the sign of Libra. If that rings a bell, it's because Mercury was in this part of your situation from the 26th of August to the 23rd of September. But also, Pluto, the planet of change and transformation, which has been pushing you around the very base of your life since 2008, and your attitude to finance, but also your self-worth, that ends a retrograde which began at the end of April. And that is going to be really something to savour. But it's the full moon that occurs on the 9th that really brings some true potential into this month. Some of the sluggish uncertainties of the first week make way. A full moon can be a challenge, of course. It's when the moon and the sun are in opposition. But this time the moon is in the very charismatic fifth house where Jupiter is. And it's giving you an opportunity to try to reset the balance in your situation. If, for example, you've been too caught up with the needs of others and too much of a people pleaser, very easy to do with Venus in your 11th house. Um, it's just possible that here the full moon is just asking you to stay mindful of your own needs. But generally, I think this is really saying that the following two weeks can actually bring about lots of social opportunities. And I do feel that a lot of people are going to want uh, a piece of you, as they uh, would say. So that's a very gratifying thing to experience. But also on this event, Mars in your opposite sign, House 7, Relationships, is linking brilliantly to the Sun and Venus in House 11, your future plans, but also your network and your friends. And in turn, they're both linking to Saturn, the planet of structure, in the part of your situation to do with your thoughts and everyday interactions. And this grand air trine can really give you a, a wonderful opportunity to shape how you want to go forwards. You can be uh, persuasive because of the air energy of these three positions, but also because for you, the house positions are also airy. I think this is a great chance for you to use your natural passion in a way that helps you to connect to the people who are really meaningful. And that's going to become a deeper theme as this month goes on. But week two also sees the sun and Venus continue to be stabilized by Saturn. So that can be a terrific part of the month, especially when Mercury moves into your 11th house again. It's a very friendly area. And if there has been some uncertainties about uh, your business interests or what you should do about your work, I think greater clarity could come at that point. But the could comes from the fact that Mars is squaring up with Neptune right through this month and also in November and part of March next year. And the exact square occurs on the 12th. So Mars is in your sector of the 7th house. That's great for being competitive, setting your boundaries, being a bit more acquisitive around relationships. So if you're single, getting you on the front foot. And because the Sun and Venus are in such a glorious location, they're going to give you added charisma, but also a very democratic vibe. You know, you can get on with just about everyone, but the important thing is to get on with the people who are good for you. And I think Neptune can be tricky because it's in your sector of emotion and it's been there since 2012. And I think you would agree since then, there have been some times when there may have been some quite innate 
uncertainty about your emotional or home life or your, your own personal identity may have been under a cloud at times. But I think what Mars is saying is continue to retain the, the thrust and be aware of the instinctive and dreamy energies of Neptune, but don't be dominated by them because they could just take away a little bit of your motivation if you're not careful. Now, the 19th is a very, really important day because Pluto in your sector of everyday money, now it's going forwards and self-worth and the foundations of your world, that squares up with that Sun-Venus combination. And the problem with this particular angle is that Pluto on Venus often creates a leverage and politics, to be honest, and because of the, the, the popularity that the Sun and Venus together can bring to you, maybe offers are going to be heading your way. They could be romantic overtures. It could be an offer around a business situation. There may be something that tempts you around a financial uh, strand in your situation. But just be aware with Pluto, there's always some deeper drive or need, which can, not necessarily always, can be driven by a little bit of self-interest. So your idealism could be punctured by the reality of life or someone's insincerity at this point of the month. But having said that, the 22nd sees the Sun and Venus come into an exact alliance, a conjunction, and this really can set the tone for you for this month because I really feel that as much as you may discover who you can't rely upon this month, and there could be some significant disappointments. There's going to be so many ups as well. So it's very, very important that even if you do encounter the worst of person kind, or how disappointing life can be, there's still so much there to suggest that your star is in the ascendancy. So it really can be that magical. Now on the 23rd, Saturn ends a retrograde, which began on the 4th of June. And if your nervous system has been feeling really quite under pressure uh, in recent months, and this may be something that's been ongoing since 2021, it's partly because Saturn and Uranus are in a very grinding and attritional and abrasive square. So the fact that Saturn is uh, going forwards again is going to lessen the tension somewhat. But they can only be truthful from the 2nd to the 12th of this month, they are within one minute of an exact square. And this is going to be a rendalance of some of the uh, energy that you felt last year and really it's down to this Sagittarius you can't please all of the people all of the time and I think that if you're overloading yourself by trying to do too many things inevitably if you're spinning those plates there's going to be some uh, droppages so the important thing is to prioritize narrow your focus and decide on what's really important. But I think when Saturn goes forwards, some of the tension can ease. And then also on the 23rd, the Sun and Venus make their way in to your 12th house. This is a very spiritual part of your chart. But also it can be where we become more aware of the people that are really sincere and trustworthy in our situation. And the solar eclipse, which occurs on the 25th in conjunction with Venus, sets the tone for the next six months. So some very deep relationships can develop in that time. So some of the apparently friendly uh, vibes that you have earlier in the month can see some ties just develop and become closer and closer in quite a profound way. But of course, if you are a follower of astrology, you will also know that the 12th house can be where we discover who we can't rely upon. So just be conscious of that. I think you can see that this month does provide some polarities, but the highs can be extremely high. And the way to avoid crushing lows is to set your expectations to a realistic level. Essentially, Venus can be a very charming, gracious, um, and a very alluring energy, 
but it also can be a little bit synthetic. So you've just got to divine who is really good for you and who isn't. But I feel that there's going to be more wins for you in October than losses, a lot more wins. And it's really about minimizing the risk by being canny about who you can really invest opening up to in a more fulsome way. So see that solar eclipse like that as an opportunity and be mindful of the challenges. It is true that Mercury and Pluto, for example, go through a big clash from the 25th to the 29th. And this may feel a bit like some of the energies you've experienced in recent years where, you know, you feel you've sort of reached out and been reasonable and then people have disappointed you. But of course, that's what life is like. But the more philosophical side of your nature and also the bubbly, happy-go-lucky, cheerful, optimistic side of your nature has really been tested by a series of transitions involving Saturn and Pluto. It really depends on how old you are, how much you've been on the end of this. But I think that Saturn going forwards this month is really positive. Pluto going forwards is positive. Yes, there's a tussle between Mercury, how you think, and Pluto. This could be a little bit of a squabble over a financial matter. But on the 29th, Mercury moves into your 12th house. Now, you have a massive capacity for downloading information and exploring things, and your aptitude and enthusiasm for knowledge has no bounds. But what Mercury is asking you to do here is to dig deep, do some uh, very fine and detailed research or due diligence on something that's important to you. And what you find out can be revelatory. If you're someone who's been perhaps a little bit sort of dismissive of astrology in the past, you may be surprised by how from the end of this month and over this next half year, how much more you gain from things like astrology and other esoteric crafts. But on the 30th, Mars does go into a retrograde in your sector of relating and your sector of competing. And it will continue to tangle with Neptune right through uh, the month of November too. So clarity around your relationships is important. But I think even if you've wanted to bring someone into your world in a more meaningful way, the retrograde to Mars just makes you a little bit less outgoing about it, but a bit more thoughtful. But you still have that swirling mist of Neptune affecting your emotions, which can then feed into the way you relate. So there are definitely some uh, you know, tricky influences this month. But on the whole, that conjunction between the Sun and Venus on the 22nd and that solar eclipse can be gorgeous for you and see Jupiter, your ruler, returning to your fourth house where it will be through till the 20th of December as an opportunity to push back on some of the more dissipating, misty and foggy and distorting energy of Neptune in Pisces too.